So today we are going to discuss about implant prosthodontics. So we are not going into uh, great details of implant dentistry because we know that it is a very very huge topic. Plus the problem with implant dentistry is that you know the uh, the concepts, the values, uh, you know the way we proceed with the treatment plans, everything keeps on changing. You know on a routine basis you have newer developments which get incorporated into practice so it is not something uh, you know very basic as your complete dentures which have been researched for more than 200 300 years not like removable partial dentures or fpds which have fixed laws right so implant prosthodontics has got a lot of uh, you know here and there of its own but there are some things which are the basic concepts and that is what we are going to run through in this entire session on implant prosthodontics right so the first part what we need to know are the components of implants right the implant dentistry what all components you require so you divide these components into two groups one group is the main components and the accessory components right so when you talk about the main components they are the implant fixture, the abutment and the super structure, right? So how do we classify it as a main or an accessory component? The main component always stays in the patient's mouth, right? It stays in the patient's mouth whereas accessory components are those components which are used but they can also be reused after proper autoclaving right so accessory components can be reused after autoclaving so what is meant by the term fixture Fixture also means an implant, right, which goes inside the bone. That is also called as a fixture. Abutment, all of us know, is a component that is attached on the top of an implant. And this component is going to hold the tooth. And the tooth is what is called as the superstructure. So if you have a crown over an implant, it is a superstructure. You have a bridge over an implant, it is a superstructure. You have a denture over an implant, this is also a superstructure. You have a full mouth fixed prosthesis on multiple implants, that is a superstructure, right? So superstructure is the teeth part of the entire prosthesis, right? Which is going to stay in the patient's mouth. Where do I put this superstructure on? the abutments and where does the abutment go and fit in is the fixture or the implant right so these are the main components of the implant prosthetics coming down to your accessory components so when you talk about accessory components you can divide these accessory components into surgical accessories and into prosthetic accessories right so surgical accessories are like your cover screw it is also a gingival former which comes under accessories which are surgical and prosthetic accessories you have impression copings and implant analogs right analogs or replicas so what are these things these are your prosthetic accessories so what do we want to know here as to where these components are used we are going to discuss in detail about all these parts so let us see how these components look like how do you identify these components when it comes to your, uh, you know, image based questions. So these are, you know, the favorite uh, questions of exam setters because they, uh, you know, uh, they know how to identify the components and they want you to know the components first. 
So the first out of this entire figure, what you see here, the threaded structure, this is called as an implant, right? So the threaded structure, which you see here, is called as an implant. The second structure here, a small screw, this is called as a cover screw, right? This is a cover screw. Coming on to the next component, the one which you see here looks slightly bigger than the cover screw. This component is called as a healing abutment, right? This is called as a healing abutment, also known as gingival former, right? So both these things come under surgical accessories, right? So cover screw is the smaller version. Where does this cover screw go in? It goes in on the implant, right? We will just read about it. And then you have the bigger part, which is a transmucosal screw, which is called as a healing abutment or a gingival former, right? The next component which you see here right this is called as an abutment right this is what is going to hold the final prosthesis then you have three components here which are called as your impression copings right they are called as impression copings they are going to be used to transfer the position of an implant from the patient's mouth onto the model right because you're going to make the entire crowns on the models so you require something which is going to take up the entire position of an implant into the model and what takes that is an impression coping now what you see here is one impression coping which is a short one then you see an impression coping with a very long screw and here you can see with a short screw but the coping is long right so this one is called as a closed tray coping and both these are called as open tray copings right so the main difference between a closed tray and an open tray coping is that in an open tray coping you will have a long screw and you will be able to visualize that screw out of the coping now this closed tray also has a screw inside right but that is inside you cannot see the screw so that is how you identify a closed tray coping the last component here which you see is an implant analog right this implant analog is going to act as an implant in the model right over this you're going to put your abutment fabricate your crowns everything so the impression coping transfers this position and the analog stays inside the cast or stays inside the working model over which the entire prosthetic procedure is done right so this is how you identify different components in implant dentistry a few are your surgical accessories and a few are your prosthetic accessories then when you see a crown on an implant this is how the entire unit is so what you see here is the full unit which you see in the patient's mouth now this comprises of an implant here which goes inside the bone this area is your abutment and on the abutment we have placed the final crown right so that is what is the full unit so you have an implant the abutment goes in and seats inside the implant these channels they match inside and you can lock it and over that you can cement your crown right so these three parts which you see here are all the main implant components right they are not accessories they are going to stay inside the patient's mouth that is why they are called as the main components next coming on to the different types of 
connections right different types of connections an implant is going to have so your implant is divided into basically two types of connections one is called as an external hex connection and the other one is called as an internal hex connection now other than this these implants can be either cylindrical right these implants can be tapered these implants can be solid or slightly hollow they can have a small screw vent portion right so there are different types of designs of an implant so what do we basically mean when we say an external hex or when we say an internal hex so when you see these implants here right so what you see is this connection right this connection this connection is outside the main body of an implant right main body of the implant so that means this connection is called as an external hex connection right like you have seen a water bottle or a coca cola bottle so what do you see is that you have a bottle and you have to you know when you put in the cap it is from the outside so that is what is called as an external hex that means when i am going to place my abutment over this implant it is going to come in and fit from above this so that is what is called as an external hex right so this is how an external hex looks so the implant body the implant body ends here right so this is your implant body and this part here the connection which is called as the external hex for an implant similarly you have the second connection which is called as an internal connection so when you see this you can see that this is a hex which has been made here and the connection is inside the implant so the entire surface which i can see macroscopically is an internal connection right i don't see any external connection here right so this is what is called as an internal connection so it is something like your wine bottle where the cork goes inside right locks from inside so that is what is called as an internal connection so nowadays we very rarely use an external connection implant so most commonly the connection which is used is an internal connection implant also since you have a hex here this is called as an internal hex right you have different variations if instead of hex you have something which is like this right so you have one you have two you have three so this is called as a tri channel internal connection right so this is another example of an internal connection so when you see this one this is a hex right you have six sides that is what we discussed one two three four five and six so the six side is called as a hex when you have three sides this is called as a tri channel so different types of internal connections now when we talk about the different structures so what do you see here the first implant here is a completely cylindrical implant right this is a completely cylindrical from top to bottom from the crest to apex it is cylindrical but when you see the second implant this implant you can find the implant to be tapered that means it is broad at the crest and narrow at the apex right this is called as a tapered implant 
so you have different varieties from different companies you have cylindrical implants you have tapered implants now the third implant which you see here has got a small hole near the apex right this is called as a screw vent implant right this is called as a screw vent implant so why because this entire the first and the second implants are all completely solid implants now this implant has a place where the bone is going to grow in and lock completely right so it is going to be a very strong implant because some bone goes in through that area so it is not only the bone which is going to come and approximate on the outer edges but you will also have bone which goes inside onto the inner edges and holds the entire implant right so you have different types of implants with different researches like if you have a cylindrical implant a cylindrical implant will always have increased surface area as compared to the tapered implant right why because a cylinder will always have more surface area more surface area <coughs> means better osseo integration potential right so this is how different uh, implants studies have been done and people uh, have different varieties of implants which are available then coming on to the next important point this is about the implant now we need to understand the features of an implant right features of an implant like there are terms which are important called as thread pitch right thread pitch is the distance between two threads on an implant surface which is called as thread pitch then you have something which is called as thread shape right so the thread shape can be v shaped you can have a buttress shape you can have a reverse buttress shape you can have square threads right so these are all the different thread shapes the third important term is thread depth what is meant by thread depth it is the distance between the outermost and innermost part of the thread right so we need to know that all these implants they vary depending upon the different thread width thread shape thread size uh, you know the pitch of the thread so all these things are the variations in between implants so when you see this diagram what we need to understand here is that this is the body of the implant right this is the body of the implant so body of the implant means it is the inner diameter and from the thread from the thread to the outer part of thread is called as the outer diameter right so basically your thread depth is outer diameter minus the inner diameter right that gives you the thread depth what is the pitch pitch is the distance between two threads right this is what is called as a thread pitch so various researchers they change their designs change the thread pitches change the thread depths that is what is called as a thread pitch now coming on to these diagrams so these are the different shapes of threads which are available so when you see these threads here so these threads are all v shaped right all these threads are uh, v shaped this is how the threads are shaped so this is called as a v thread 
then you have these broad square threads right these are broad threads and called as square threads another variation of an implant then you have a buttress and a reverse buttress you can easily see that the buttress is having the channels going towards downwards whereas the reverse buttress has got channels which are going upwards so they are significant when you are dealing with implants but as of now from your mcq point of view you need to know what are the different varieties which are available all these different varieties of threads can be used in different indications there is no thread as of now which has been found to be extremely superior as compared to the other threads now coming on to the next uh, components one by one so the first component which we are going to deal here is called as a cover screw a small screw which you saw in the components figure so cover screw is the that part which is placed in the superior aspect is placed in the superior aspect of a two piece implant right that means implant is going to have a channel where all other things are going to get connected right so that is what is called as a cover screw now what happens with the cover screw during the second stage surgery during the second stage surgery the cover screw is removed and the next component which is the gingival former is placed right so second stage surgery what do you mean by a second stage surgery this means after the osseo integration period is complete after the osseo integration period is complete so on an average if you say maxilla the osseo integration takes around 6 months in mandible it is usually 3 to 4 months where in 3 months is primarily for the anterior mandible and 4 months is for the posterior mandible so this phase of 6 months or 3 months or 4 months is the time we allow the implant to get fixed with the bone and that is called as osseo integration so who gave the concept of osseo integration it was brennemark who gave the concept of osseo integration right so how does a cover screw look like so what you see here is the implant right this is the implant and this is the cover screw which has threads and goes inside the implant this is how it looks in the radiograph you can see this part a small screw going in right this is your cover screw right we place it allow it to heal and then after a period of 6 months for maxilla 3 to 4 months for mandible we open it and place the gingival former so this is what you see here is the cover screw now what you see in this diagram here is a bigger screw right which is called as the gingival former gingival former is also called as per mucosal extension per mucosal extension p 
PME. This is also called as a healing abutment. Also called as trans epithelial abutment. Right? So these are the different terms. So don't get confused when in MCQs they ask you what is a gingival former, what is a healing abutment. So all these things are same, right? That is why I've given you all these different names because in MCQs they will shuffle these names and then you get confused as to, uh, you know, which name is for which component. So when you see these gingival formers, these gingival formers are going to extend above the soft tissue, above the soft tissue tissue whereas the cover screw totally goes in it is at the level of the implant now this extends above the soft tissue what does it do it gives the emergence profile right it forms the emergence profile so basically it forms a gingival cuff around the implant so that when you place your crown there, it should look that the crown is coming from within, right? The pontic uh, space or the implant crown <coughs> should not look as if it is something which is, uh, you know, completely different. So it should come out and that is the purpose of a gingival former. So what you see here is all these gingival formers here in this line, they are having a length of 3, 3, 3 and 3 millimeters. But the diameter is different. 3.8, 4.5, 5.5, 6.3, 5 right? So this is from one specific company. Every company gives their own sizes. So the wider healing collar is used for molars. Slightly less than that can be used for premolars. These can be used for anteriors where the broader one is maxillary anterior and the other one is mandibular anterior zone. Similarly, the way you have different widths in the same length, you also have different lengths in the same width. So when you see this, this depends on the height of tissue. So when you select your gingival former if you are placing a small gingival former and the tissue grows back over it it will be of no use that is why you get gingival formers of different heights and different widths this is how it looks clinically so what you can see now is that this is projecting out of the mucosa right you can see these abutments out of the mucosa this is what is called as your healing abutment right where you see radiographically right when you see radiographically what happens what you are seeing here is the cover screw right small screw going inside the implant is the cover screw Whereas this is the healing abutment, right? You can see this is coming out of the entire mucosa. That is what is called as the healing abutment. So both of them, they share same channel, right? The channel is same. The cover screw is smaller, goes deep. It is submerged. Whereas the healing abutment is trans epithelial. Right? So the cover screw is always submerged into the tissue and the healing abutment is transmucosal, right? It is transmucosal, the healing abutment. This is how it looks in the patient's mouth. So when you see this is the gingival former and you can see how good a gingival cuff is being formed in this area right this is the gingival cuff similarly for the molars you use a wider healing abutment and you can see the kind of tissue you have all around 
right so this is the purpose giving an emergence profile is the purpose of using a gingival former now coming down to the next component which is the impression coping right so we read that when you are talking about impression copings you have two different types of copings one is called as an open tray coping and the other one is called as a closed tray coping open tray is also called as direct coping and closed tray is also called as an indirect coping why and how they function that is what we are going to talk about so what is the purpose of an impression coping an impression coping provides the spatial relationship provides the spatial relationship of the implant to the alveolar ridge and adjacent teeth so that exact relationship that exact position <coughs> is what we are going to transfer now open tray copings are primarily indicated when you have multiple implants and when you have implants which are not parallel right different angulation misangled implants there is where you use an open tray coping where do i use a closed tray coping a closed tray coping is usually used for single implants or they can be used for multiple implants only when the implants are extremely parallel right otherwise you do not use these uh, closed tray copings so this is how an open tray coping looks like right so what you see here is an open tray coping so how do we identify the open tray coping we have all read it earlier that you have to have a long screw right this long screw will help you in identifying an open tray impression coping so here you can see that we have one two three four five six multiple implants the angulation of this implant is in this direction the angulation of this implant is in the other direction so i need something with which i can make an impression i loosen my screws and when i take out the impression all the impression copings come out along with the tray that is what is called as an open tray impression coping right and this is how you can do an open tray impression this is how it looks with a long screw and this is the closed tray coping which remains attached to the implant body on removal of the impression so when you remove the impression the coping will still stay in the patient's mouth right so that is what is called as an open tray uh, closed tray coping the screw obviously here is a short screw so when you take the open tray impression this remains within the impression this remains within the impression whereas the closed tray coping remains attached to the implant body on removal of the impression right so that is what we need to understand that how a closed tray coping is different from an open tray coping this is how a closed tray coping looks 
right so you cannot see a long screw which is projecting the screw is somewhere here right the small screw this is how it looks it has one surface which is flat why because a flat surface will help in orientation orientation of the coping in the impression right because when you remove this impression from the patient's mouth the coping is going to stay there and if the coping is going to stay there you will have to take it out and then reinsert into the impression so that is why it has a flat surface so you can see the flat surface see the flat surface on the impression and fit the coping back So the next component after the impression coping is an implant analog, right? The next component is called as an implant analog. Now, what is an implant analog? The implant analog is a replica of implant and this is going to stay in the model it is going to stay in the model and act as an implant in the model right so entire fabrication of the prosthesis all the steps of uh, you know crown preparation or denture or whatever you are trying to do on an implant for everything this analog will actually act as an implant and you can do your entire prosthesis fabrication placement of abutments and uh, you know wax pattern everything can be done so that means the internal structure the internal structure of an analog is same as an implant only then it is going to be compatible right so if i am using an external hex implant and i use an analog of an internal hex will the abutment fit in the model no so that is why you have all these analogs as exact replica of your implant the only thing is that you don't need threads on the outer surface so that is the advantage because you, uh, you know, that is the difference between an implant and an implant analog. So this is how an implant analog looks. <clears throat> different companies have different uh, you know, types of analogs, different shapes of analogs. So what you see here are all these implant analogs right so you can see these implant analogs have channels right this has a channel here this has a channel here this has two channels now this analog has a channel here this has a huge channel here why why are these channels this is to provide mechanical interlocking with the plaster right it is going to have a mechanical interlocking with the plaster with the stone model which you are pouring because this needs to stay in position and should not move so they have given grooves or locks and all these the internal connection for all these the internal connections are same as their corresponding implants right it is same as their corresponding implants so if i am using a uh, internal hex implant from x company uh, I, if i am using it from like noble biocare i need an analog from noble biocare for the same size of an implant right so that is what is the purpose of an implant analog and this is how the implant analog looks in the model
Now this patient had eight implants placed. <clears throat> what you see here are all these eight implants in the model, right? So this is how an analog works. What is this pink part? This pink part is called as gingival mask, right? What this pink part does that this is going to mimic the gingiva in the patient's mouth, right? So that is how this entire prosthesis is going to be made on this model, right? So you have these analogs and then you have a gingival mask, which is basically made up of silicone material, right? Like your right bodies or your rubber based materials, your silicone materials, you can inject them with the gun the way you do for your light bodies. This is <coughs> called as your gingival mask, right? This is how the model is poured. So what you see here is the analog, which is here, right? And this analog goes in and fits onto the impression coping in the model. Once you pour this, this entire part is going to stay in the cast, right? It is going to stay in the cast or the model. So that is what is called as a gingival, uh, as called as an implant analog, right? So what happens in the lab? So in the lab, you have this abutment, which goes inside the analog and you have the crown, which is made over it. Right. This is how the entire unit is going to be. And what is happening in the mouth? The implant is already there in the patient's mouth. So you just from here, you take out the abutment and you put the abutment into the implant and place your crown. Right. So this is how the entire lab procedure is done. So you place your abutment on the analog, do your milling modification, make your customized crown, check for everything take it on to the patient, remove the abutment, place it in the implant in the patient's mouth and place your crown. So that is what is the purpose of an implant analog, right? So in the next session, we're going to take up the other components and the uh, abutments of different uh, types which are used in implant dentistry, right?